Hi everyone, uh, greetings to DPS session. My name is Mukesh Kumar um, and I'm from Azure Database Platform, uh, responsible for mainframe, Oracle, uh, Sybase and SQL modernization, um, uh, on-prem or from other clouds to Azure Data Platform. Um, um, in this session, we are going to be uh, extremely focused on uh, mainframe and mid-range modernization. Uh, and uh, uh, I have Asis Kandelwal and Amethyst Solomon, who are mainframe and mid-range SMEs, um, uh, part of the Azure Data Engineering, uh, who will be spending quality time to uh, uh, talk through the blockers, as well as a uh, um, few of the uh, mark you wins that we have uh, 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 help customers secure um, you know, migrating and modernizing from mainframe and mid-range to Azure Data, data Platform. And then uh, there are a couple of uh, fantastic demos uh, uh, to showcase the innovation Microsoft is doing in this uh, complex landscape of mainframe and mid-range modernization. Um, so moving to the next slide, and, and while we are uh, doing the uh, presentation, please feel free to post your questions because these are very complex topics. There's a lot of R&D innovation and, and, and functional and commercial aspects to it. Uh, and we understand you would have a lot of questions. So please post your questions on the, on the chat window. Uh, as I said, agenda-wise, um, we will be talking about all the investments from engineering and sales-wise we have to, to really tap into this uh, uh, mainframe and ma mid-range modernization. Uh, and then like spend a little bit of time around uh, what and why Azure Data Platform is, is doing, right, to, to really accelerate these modernizations because uh, data is, is very critical for major workloads. And if you have that background uh, coming from legacy world, you would know that data amounts to close to 40 to 70 percent range of uh, any MIPS or, or uh, uh, mainframe uh, capacity utilization, right? That today happens, right? Uh, we are also going to talk about um, you know what are the platforms and sources available. Uh, uh, target platform on Azure database uh, and Azure data available to bring uh, mainframe current technology stack. For example, DE2, VSAM, IMS, how do you map them to which platform and, and what is Microsoft's uh, prescribed guidance, right? To, for you to select one over other. Um, and again, that those are prescribed guidance. Doesn't mean that you are bound to just go and follow that blindly as we totally understand system integration phase has boundaryless uh, 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 options, right? Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we also want to talk about how, while we have platforms, right, for you to bring uh, something from your source uh, infrastructure and software stack to a target infrastructure and software stack or Azure, um, how are we helping you to accelerate that process, right? How much automation and how much ISV ecosystem enrichment and custom solutions we have built for, for 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 your journey to be easier, we will we'll touch upon that. And as I said, we'll talk about the challenges and unique patterns, case studies, and demos. Uh, before I go and talk about the investments, right, that we have in this space, I, I want to spend thirty seconds um, just discussing and explaining the thought process behind it. Right? Um, you might wonder why data has so much R&D focus, right? Uh, when it comes to mainframe and mid-range modernization. Uh, and I want to start by showing this very simple illustrative view of how an application and data, uh, right? Might have, uh, would have uh, grown, uh, you know, 10 years ago, right? Same application, how did this grow in terms of application footprint and data footprint footprint by now, right? So it'll be in 10 years between an application and data, what grew at what uh, space, uh, what pace, um, that matters, right? And and looking at backward in your past, how the growth has happened, you can anticipate how your future growth will happen. And it's pretty evident from this slide, right? That application data, land of code, uh, right? Um, uh, that eventually uh, got enhanced and, and incremental values were added, you can see data has exponentially grown, right? Even size-wise, as you see. And this is not just for mainframe or mid-range applications, right? 
you go and touch Oracle apps, you go touch even SQL, right? OSS uh, uh, data platform based apps, you will see almost similar trend, right? So it was no brainer for us to concentrate our R&D efforts um, uh, to really lit up true modernize and being in data, right? And make sure that customers understand and our partners like GSI understand um, uh, that why and how data first strategy is so critical, right? And keeping that in mind, many of you might be aware that uh, uh, Microsoft brings a unique blend of uh, uh, platform capabilities and products like SQL, PostgreSQL, Cosmos DB, Synapse, few to name, right? Uh, where which are choices for you to bring your data from mainframe or between, right? And when I say bring your data, please understand I'm not referencing just migrate, right? There are so many huge cases for data and application, like ingestion is one of the huge case uh, where you ingest some parcel schema or objects from your legacy ecosystem to uh, Azure database platform. And then from there, you either do uh, analytics or you do uh, you do net new app dev, right? Um, completely cloud native. Uh, there are use cases where customers are coexisting. They're saying, okay, I will keep my COBOL and DB2 for a long term, uh, but uh, I also need to build Java and .NET uh, core-based applications using SQL, PostgreSQL, or Cosmos DB, altogether cloud native, right, in Azure. That is also happening. And to lit up those uh, scenarios, right, along with products, we also have tools and services like SQL Server Migration Assistance, right, SSMA, Azure Data Factory, right? We have DAMT, which goes and probes uh, application uh, blocks, right, um, uh, for a for, uh, couple of supported uh, languages, right? And then uh, one of the very famous product earlier uh, during BizTalk days, now it's part of the Logic Apps and Host Integration Service, DRDA protocol-based uh, uh, um, uh, gateway, right, that allows uh, COBOL programs to do uh, bindings with SQL dialects directly without having any code chain. And that's super critical and, and a very unique differentiator for Microsoft, right, from any other cloud providers uh, uh, so that customers can coexist their solution between COBOL DB2 to COBOL SQL, right? And we are building, making continued enhancements in that area to lit up those use cases more and more, right? Uh, when we come down from products and services and migration tools, as you know, Microsoft is investing heavily towards bringing global black belts and CSAs and CSS, last but not least, engineering teams like us who are uh, bringing the blend of uh, and expertise uh, of not just product, Microsoft products and services, but also uh, uh, like Amethyst and Ashish and the org uh, uh, within multiple orgs within Microsoft who are hired with, with mainframe and mid-range background. They are available to make your journey, right? Modernization journey much, much smoother, right? Moving away from mainframe or mid-range to Azure platform. Um, and then the third layer of investment that we are doing is from all these learnings, incubations, and R&Ds that we are doing, we are not wasting our cycles to do analysis paralysis on these findings, right? We are, we are very agile and quick to um, ship some of these um, um, uh, findings and best practices either through azure.com architecture solutions or uh, uh, multiple Git postings, right? Uh, there are LinkedIn posts and Twitter handles that are very active to uh, tell you what are the different art of possibilities that we are learning. Uh, and um, uh, uh, in the Microsoft Docs standard uh, uh, repository, you will find tons of information, right? And it's very easy. If you want a collation of it, just, just go to datamagazine.microsoft.com and you'll find out a bunch of those scenarios nicely packaged for you to consume. And these are all the layers of investments that Microsoft is doing. Now coming to, as I said, we have uh, um, uh, choices of platform and we have prescriptive guidance towards um, uh, what you choose for a different, uh, uh, for a specific mainframe service and, and product stack and, uh, and software stack, right, on mapping to Azure Data Press platform. This is a quick illustration of that. And please note, um, um, this is this does not mean that you should always bring your DB2 to SQL Server uh, and not consider Synapse or PostgreSQL. This, this is an illustration to tell you, as of today, we have done enough 
um, uh, R&D and, and customer um, uh, uh, workload migrations that we know that we have maturity to lit up, let's say, DB2 to SQL Server and SQL DB on Azure uh, migrations much faster because we have industrialized tools. We have the conversion surface area for tools like, let's say, SSMA is, is much, much higher today, right? For SQL as compared to PostgreSQL, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. You, we can always do. There are other third-party tools that we can lean on, right? Um, 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 but this should give you this should give you an idea how Microsoft brings choices for you to choose from, right? Um, how Microsoft is the is uniquely positioned to give you multiple choices, right? Like whether you are a SQL sub or your downstream upstreams are SQL or PostgreSQL, right? Or NoSQL based, like for Cosmos DB. Um, you have options to choose from, and these are potential platforms for you to bet on for long term, right? And similarly, if you, uh, we often talk about relationals, but we forget about the non-relational file systems, right? Like VJAM, IMS, and Informix, some, somewhere in between, right? Um, we have done enough incubation now to proudly go and say, hey, for VJAM, I think your default location should be Cosmos DB because we know enough, right? And there, there are ev enough evidences that VJAM uh, um, uh, data can be migrated to Cosmos DB much more efficiently. Uh, uh, having said that, it can also move to SQL Server and, and SQL Pass and PostgreSQL. Again, it, it's an illustration of how much effort you will, you will end up putting on this, right? Um, now, as I talked about potential product lines, right, for, uh, for a specific mainframe product stack, um, um, the story will be incomplete if we don't talk about what Microsoft is bringing uh, in terms of automation and, and codification, right? Uh, for each pages of the modernization. Uh, and as you can see on this screen, uh, we have, we, Microsoft has thought through different phases, right? That industry and uh, customers and our GSI partners always go through, right? Like discovery and assessment. And again, this is not unique for mainframe. It's a, uh, it's uh, 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 it's pretty common for any migration or modernization project you take up, right? You will undergo discovery assessment, object and schema migration for databases specifically. You will do initial data migration or AKA initial load. Then you will do replication and sync. And then there are use cases, as I said earlier, for coexistence where you would need CDC. And post CDC you also need consistent data validation because, hey, you're moving your app stick to ASCII and there, there are a lot of things that, that can go wrong. And how does business trust that, uh, uh, you know, uh, post-migration, my, my data referential and atomicity is, is intact, right? So we have thought through each of these pages and as you can see, our investments are really beautifully uh, categorized to help, help, you, uh, help give you an acceleration, right? In, in each of these phases. For example, for discovery and assessment, uh, we have created legacy uh, uh, mainframe and mid-range uh, uh, hardened uh, discovery and assessment scripts. These are not publicly available, but uh, these are on the Git. Uh, there, there are portions of it that we have curated enough and it's publicly available that you can use. Um, then we have SSMA, right? Uh, uh, which is widely popular and many of you might have used it. And, and we are making continued enhancements to make sure that SSMA surface area, uh, 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 you know, enriched, gets enriched uh, for all these phases. Then ADF and SSIS, as you know, for uh, initial data load, replication sync and CDC use cases. And uh, uh, HIS, which sits between replication and sync and CDC uh, for pure migration projects or as well as for the coexistence project, right? Last but not least, data comparison tool, uh, which is again a uh, 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 custom IP that we have built after listening to multiple customer feedbacks uh, to to really give you that peace of mind that when you are moving these terabytes or petabytes of data from um, uh, uh, you know mainframe infrastructure to um, Azure uh, database platform, uh, you should be rest assured that data data sanity and data atomicity is intact. Right? And this validation tool will consistently. Uh, be available for you to go test that end-to-end uh, -end use case, right, uh, during migration. Now with this, let me hand it over to Ashish, uh, who is one of our lead engineers to talk about frequent blockers and challenges. And he will also talk to some of the case studies 
and transition to demo. Asis, over to you. Thank you, Mukesh. <clears throat> uh, let me try to share my screen. Hope you can see my screen. Uh, Mukesh, can you please confirm? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, just a reminder, everyone um, uh, who is attending this session, uh, please feel free to uh, put your question in a chat window. If you have any, uh, we will answer it at the end of the session. All right, so as Mukesh mentioned, uh, uh, we're gonna talk about frequent blockers and challenges um, our customer face. And these are, uh, this is the top uh, you know, 10, 15 list we harvested from 500 plus engagements we did uh, uh, for customer who wanted to migrate uh, their mainframe uh, uh, data center or mainframe estate onto Azure. Uh, now these, this list is uh, not all, but these are, as I said, top 10 or top 15. So I'll start with few, I'll not go uh, over uh, all of them, but like discovery and assessment of mainframe and mid-range data tier, how would I be, uh, you know, uh, begin my discovery and assessment? For that, uh, we have a tool um, in previous uh, slides, um, okay, uh, explain uh, the tool is like either assessment script or SSMA. Then target database selection onto Azure platform. As you all know, Azure um, offers variety of different databases and within a databases, uh, there are different flavors too. For example, for SQL only, we have SQL database, hyperscale, managed instance, et cetera. So what will be the right target for our customer to land onto Azure platform? Uh, that is against a big, biggest uh, challenge for customer and uh, how we um, uh, answer that challenge or how we address that challenge is by assessing the database and uh, uh, the source database and uh, gathering some requirement from customer. Then we suggest them what would be the possible target onto Azure. Another uh, frequent uh, challenge is like uh, mainframe uh, database, a schema and uh, object conversion onto Azure. We have a tool, uh, SSMA, it's free of cost to uh, download for all our customer. This tool can convert uh, not just a schema, uh, but objects like table views, uh, store procedures, et cetera. So uh, again, this is a very good tool and it supports all flavors of DV2, whether it's um, uh, DV2-4Z, mainframe, uh, mid-range, AS400, or uh, DV2 uh, Linux, Unix, or Windows. Uh, another challenge, uh, data replication and sync. There are tons of third-party uh, tools and uh, softwares available for this uh, uh, to do uh, CDC from mainframe data. So I'm not gonna go over it. But uh, uh, the, another two, which are very interesting uh, for our customer, when they migrate any application uh, from on-prem onto Azure, uh, customer mostly look for uh, kind of like a hybrid uh, scenario or, or I would say uh, kind of like um, a coexisting scenario. In this scenario, uh, we generally uh, <clears throat> ask customer, uh, like a previous uh, trend was customer uh, migrate their data state onto Azure and then have a single copy of data back onto DB2. This way customer uh, have to maintain two system of record. One is on on-prem and another is on Azure. And we all know uh, maintaining two system of record is, is challenging, it's costly, and there, are, there is tons of work involved, like auditing of data, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, frequently, et cetera, et cetera. So for this, we have a good solution where uh, legacy applications running on mainframe, COBOL application running on mainframe, can directly access to SQL. I repeat, yes, uh, the mainframe application can directly access to SQL Server. And uh, this is being done uh, with one of our uh, first party service. We call it uh, host integration server. That is the Microsoft service for DRDA. And uh, with this, uh, the existing mainframe application can directly connect to Azure SQL or Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, and uh, we have a detailed demo uh, for this, which Amethyst is gonna talk in a, min uh, in a minute. Another, uh, uh, the challenge is optimizing performance of mainframe application. Either it's rehosted or refactored uh, on Microsoft Azure or, or SQL um, Server platform. Uh, rest all, I'll not iterate, but uh, this performance is the key. So we have seen a lot of customer uh, faces performance challenges when they migrate from mainframe, which is monolithic to, to distributed system, where it is a client server based architecture when it comes to uh, SQL server or distributed application. For this, um, I'm gonna talk about it, how to address it, but uh, with, with a case study. 
Okay. So I'm going to talk about uh, one of our case study, uh, customer case study uh, named Asisa. So Asisa is, is a big insurance company in, the, uh, in Spain uh, where they have um, uh, 10,000 plus uh, doctors, you know, uh, every day logging onto Asisa and, and check for insurance and et cetera. Now, the, this company was running uh, their insurer application onto uh, mainframe databases. And now if you look at uh, the customer statement, uh, I'll just read it through. Uh, uh, Microsoft and Azure performance of the platform for professional have exceeded our expectation and achieving 10% improvement. Now, how we achieve this? Now, if you wanna know how the ASISA uh, migrated their mainframe onto Azure, uh, you can read their full story here. We have the link, but I'm going to, uh, since this is a DB forum, I'm going to sp specifics of how we achieve uh, this 10% improvement, okay? Moving on to the next slide. So what was the customer scenario? First of all, they wanted to modernize their application for increasing agility software development, as well as they wanted to reduce the cost. Now this application was uh, written uh, two decades ago, right? Uh, uh, for intercompany transaction, as well as uh, insurers to log in. Uh, there were close to 16 million line of code, okay? Now, customer migrated this DB2 application onto SQL Server on VM on the Azure, and COBOL programs were refactored. Now, if you um, again, if you have done or, or look at the, uh, the the coding which has been done, you know, uh, two decades or three decades ago, uh, they were not uh, uh, that much uh, uh, looking for performance optimization. Code was uh, you know uh, written with like tens of if and and not following uh, 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 the best coding practices. Are uh, doing singleton calls, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did uh, uh, and what we do as, as an engineer uh, in, in our team, whenever any of this monolithic application or decade old, uh, old application is refactored or rehosted onto uh, um, Microsoft or SQL platform, we try to redesign their target architecture. Uh, uh, there are some sizing uh, options. We uh, 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 definitely recommend to the customer how their MIPS uh, get mapped to core because MIPS to core is not one to one ratio all the time. So we need to do it uh, proper sizing and then comes uh, performance tuning. So, so what happens is, as I said, uh, the decade old programs, they have written in you know, singleton um, uh, uh, query against the databases. It was written in, in, in mainframe, so the call was never going out of network, so there was no network overhead. They can do, um, they were having millions and millions of singleton uh, fetch within a single program, and it was running as expected. Like uh, for, for I, I can give you an example. One of the program was running for 20 minutes, and when it migrated onto client server architecture, uh, again, SQL, it was taking six hours. Okay, now with this 20 minute, we reduced to 15 minute uh, from six hours. How we did it? Again, very simple thing. We implemented some best practices, um, not on the application side, but on the database side. So instead of going for single roof, single time fetch, we ask customer to go for multi roof fetch, right? So single time versus batch query. Uh, this simple trick, uh, I, I can even show you with the demo uh, how 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 it helps. Is like if you go uh, and and I, I generally go uh, with this um, demo to the customer, saying that how singleton versus batch query will improve their performance. Very simple demo. So if I go and I try to fetch uh, hundred thousand row against SQL Server twenty seventeen with singleton, it's going to run forever. Versus if I batch this with either 10K or 15K, you see what is the, the, the response, time, response time. So total elapsed in second is uh, less than a second, 0 0.92, 0 0.80 for batch and singleton is still running. So this is the main challenge our customer generally face uh, when they migrate from uh, mainframe application onto SQL. Uh, this is just one of the recommendations we give to the customer, but there are other performance tuning uh, exercises uh, we uh, um, uh, you know, uh, recommend to customers. Uh, there are uh, certain resources we also published on, on our website, as well as in our tech community blog, which Amethyst is going to talk about. With this, uh, I'll, I'll take a pause here and I'll hand it over to Amethyst to talk more about um, 
how to enable uh, you know hybrid and coexistence use case how to run monolithic cobol program against sql server without changing a code uh, amethyst uh, over to you um I'll stop sharing thanks ashish let me start sharing Yeah, we can so, see you. Okay, great. Um, and uh, my name is Amit Solomon. I'm here to be uh, presenting some of the technical details that Ashish mentioned earlier. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, the first thing that we pointed out from uh, Mukesh. Like my, Microsoft provides a multitude of um, products that can cover end-to-end -end migration space. And for this particular uh, demonstration and what we are going to look at uh, is the DRDA service, which is a part of host integration server. Host integration server consists of a bunch of different uh, products that we have today from connecting DB2 and also connecting messaging queues and uh, other variations of any mainframe related connections, including TN3270. Uh, one of those uh, variations or one of the products under HIS is called uh, Service for DRDA. As Ashish pointed out, this enables our customers to have a hybrid scenario where any of your COBOL apps, PL Bar 1 apps, Java, whatever it might be, and wherever it might run, right? You might have a Kix TC or it might run in a, a batch environment under JES. And this would still work because what we are doing underneath the covers is whenever you have a call that is made into DB2, we are routing that to this DRDA service, which can then route the call to a SQL database on Azure or a SQL server on-prem, whichever one fits your needs. This can work against any of them. And the completeness of the solution, what, what makes customers look into the solution is a lot of the customers today have an uh, hybrid solution need because not all of their core workloads can just be migrated as a lift and shift mode where everything goes into the cloud. There needs to be a phased migration. And this allows the customer, in case of a phased migration, where there is no changes. So I will repeat that there are no changes that are needed on your application standpoint, except that you have to repoint it to the new remote server on DB2. Uh, I will go into the specifics right now, but before I go into the specifics, I just want to take a quick checkpoint. Are there any questions on the chat that, uh, that needs to be addressed here for this specific use case? Okay, so um, in case there are any questions, just put it on the chat. We will address it at the end of this uh, session. So here in this particular point, what we do in DRDA services, we receive any DRDA IP call. So anything that comes to DB2 that is pointed to this remote server will come in as DRDA protocol calls. And then what it does is it changes those queries into TDS, T-SQL queries that can be routed to the SQL database. So this can be, as I mentioned, an online query or a batch query. And we will look into some of the batch queries as Ashish pointed out you might want to batch these batch queries together rather than run it as singleton queries, but they are additional on top of what we can do here. This makes sure that applications that are still running on COBOL, that are still running on Java or anything on the mainframe can access a cloud database while your systems can, your developers can then build on top of this cloud database. Because there is only a single source of truth in this whole scenario, your mainframe systems can still run as is while you develop your new set of applications on the cloud. And this eliminates the need for bidirectional replication. As you might imagine, bidirectional replication is always a bit tricky, even in the best of scenarios. And by doing this, you eliminate any kind of need for that. And there is always a single source of truth. And DRDA helps achieve, or the service for DRDA helps achieve 
that performance that is needed to convert and to reconvert back from DB2 and the SQL framework. So I will go into a specific uh, picture here. So as you see here, so the application layer on DB2 can run a query against DB2. DB2 then notes, okay, this particular query needs to be routed to a remote server. It sends it to the host integration server, which is the solution that we looked at. And this again routes that same query, be it select, update, whatever it is. And then back from SQL, it converts the result set into what is needed for DB2 and DB2 then routes it back to the application. Uh, I will now go on to a demo to show you how easy it is. And uh, let me go back to the session. This is a pre-recorded demo, but I will show what is needed on this demo. Uh, quickly, just a minute. I'm just adjusting my screen here. Um, and in this demo, as you might note, uh, we have a, it's just a normal Kix application. And in this Kix application, there is uh, three different databases, one for DB2, one for SQL, and one for Azure SQL DB. And we can do a simple operation, either you create, update, or delete. And for this application, let me just start the um, recording or the video here. Give me a second here. I think the okay. Uh, sorry for that. Um, so in this recording, as you see, we are first querying the account number to a SQL Server database. So as you see, we go to SQL Server. We pointed to a SQL Server DB and. Uh, you might see that we get back the update. This is directly coming from a SQL DB and from a kick screen. And continuing into the demo, what this does is we are going to look at the SQL DB here. And on top of here, you might note that it is database.windows.net and it's running on um, SQL Server managed instances. And we are going to update the customer name and submit this recording. back into our original Kicks application. So going back into the Kicks application, we see when we run the same account number and get the details, we get it from SQL and we have the name updated. So Kenai, the audience might have noted, we also show what the link is on the bottom. So we are running through the demo again, just to show what that is. Um, so, Going back in the middle of the demo, we update this record. And when we go back to the screen, you might see the call duration in milliseconds uh, is 175 on the first call. But when we do it again, it is 34 milliseconds. The reasoning behind it is the first time that you set up any session, you're going to be setting up also the connections and that is why it takes a bit of time, but uh, 34 milliseconds is it's just a demo, and these are not production settings. So eventually, this might be this might be a better setting as you go into production workloads, and we might have better performance. But it still gives you an idea how fast the system is, even when doing queries across different data centers. Uh, that is the critical ask from most of our customers: how well does it perform? That is so to be to be frank, right? That is nothing is going to be as fast as running everything on your same rack. That is always going to be some network overhead as we go into a client server architecture. And we try to achieve performance by looking into some of these batching, as Ashish mentioned, is one of the prime candidates to actually bulk up your either selects or updates or inserts through the network so that you avoid having a lot of network overhead and also keeping connections um, isolated and only connecting as needed so that you do not have any uh, layover systems that are trying to 
get off your bandwidth. So all of these are some of the technical aspects of what we look at, some of the best practices, uh, how we do some proximity placement so that your client and your servers are together. All of this is part of what our team does as a part of the engineering best practices. And we could help you achieve faster performance, as Ashish pointed out in Dasisa, 10% more performance on Azure than on mainframes. So this is where we are with uh, the demo on DRDA service. I will now go on to speak about the next key takeaways of what we have demonstrated on this session. So to the next uh, slide here. And here we are actually going to be speaking about what we have done so far in this session. So the key, the first thing is the investments that we have already, Mukesh pointed out, there's a bunch of invest, investments that we are doing on the mainframe and mid-range data modernization, including from assessment phase, data migration, object conversion, and also the data validation at the end of this process and how engineering is white gloving a lot of these complex and unique patterns and bringing them uh, to the community, either through a block space or architecture centers, which we will speak about at the end of the session, where uh, it's publicly available. And uh, if some of them are not, you could reach out directly to us, uh, the engineering team who can help you out with setting those uh, at your customers and or your own IT data centers. The next one is um, about the common technical and functional blockers that we spoke about. What are we seeing at the customers today? Like how are they trying to handle some of these scenarios as workloads become larger and larger? And how do we handle hybrid scenarios where part of your application is running on-prem, part of it is running on Azure? Do we need an ETL kind of scenario to migrate data? Do we need a DRDA kind of scenario? to have a single source of truth, or do we need a combination of both? And that is where we found out a lot of these uh, learnings that we find from customers. We try to bring that to the community as well. And the last thing about here is back to what Mukesh mentioned on the workload mappings. What do we have today between DB2, IMS, Visa workloads, and how does that map to any of the data services on Azure? So SQL Pass or OSS databases like PostgreSQL or NoSQL like Cosmos and or an analytics environment like Synapse. How do they map and how do you understand what can go where, right? Uh, we, would also, we also have assessment scripts that, can, that we can run and help you understand what kind of workload are you running on mainframe? How do we compare MIPS? Does a uh, thumb rule of one to 150 MIPS or something like that map? Not always, right? Uh, that is where our team's background helps you to help you understand how do we be more granular than just do a MIPS calculation on the board. And then we also talked about the advanced capabilities, the batch versus singleton, uh, DRDA installations and other uh, capabilities like ADF and other things that we will speak about um, in the next slides, how they help achieve customers in a lot of these scenarios. So the last solution is the custom solutions, which we will also be speaking about in the next slide. So this is the tool set that we have. This is a part of the tool set, not the entire one. But as you see, we have direct mappings from DB2 to SQL on ADF, where we can run end-to-end -end conversions. It could be either a uh, dynamic script for all of your tables, a delta of your tables, or even within tables, do you need to split up your pipeline, right? To ingest data from mainframes. So a lot of our customers have hundreds of terabytes of data and it's hard to always migrate every data from mainframe. So we do an initial load and then we follow up with a replication mode where we try to get data as a delta. And how do we achieve that using ADF and or another solution? We already spoke about what the DRDA service looks like. We also have some custom tooling around migrating identities of mainframe into Azure AD, how to convert any unload files, for example, your VSAM or your DB2 unloads, or even just sequential reporting files that you have on mainframe today. How do we actually convert and unpack them on Azure using a no-code, low-code solution like Azure Data Factory? You might have known we probably have other versions of it where you might have to code or you might have to set up other things, but Azure Data Factory provides you a, a pretty low-code way so that you do not have to do anything on the back end 
Um, we will speak about what are the limitations of that thing and where it can shine. We also have assessment scripts across all of this. And going back, we also have some, I, I don't have to go through all of it, but what I would do is I would go to some of the publications that we have done here to make sure that you understand what is on Azure Data Center. So this is the Architecture Center publication for DRDA that we spoke about and we demoed. This helps with coexistence, this helps with hybrid scenarios, and this helps with no changes to your application in a phased migration approach, where part of your application stays as is, where you can start building out new functionalities on Azure. And whenever you have enough functionalities built up, you can then isolate enough COBOL programs. You can even migrate single transactions from your Kicks or IMS systems that run against DB2 to a SQL and Azure-based system. And we also have other uh, variations here, also even moving just uh, generally all data sets, right? Be it uh, VSAM, be it DB2, be it IMS, what, what do we have? What, is, what do our partners have? And uh, what are the other custom solutioning that we can do to implement to any of the data storages? That is what adds value. You do not have to choose one or the other. You could choose any of them or multitude of them. And we would be able to achieve the conversion needed for this translation from relational to relational, non-relational to Cosmos, non-relational to relational, or any of the VSAM data sets to, let's say, blob storage, right? We could do any of those. Uh, you can reach out to us to any of the help needed to make that happen. We also have any, this is a low hanging fruit, as you might know, archive data is taking a bunch of your tape space. And if that is the case, we could help you migrate all of that into Azure and also help you read those data uh, from Azure directly without need for any rehydration into mainframe. So all of those is provided in our Azure Architecture Center. And I will also go to our block space. Our block space provides, uh, as Mukesh pointed out, our team helps with a lot of not just mainframe and DB2, but Oracle, Sybase, and other uh, heterogeneous migrations as well. And we actually speak about a lot of different things, but as you can see, it speaks about how to do a guidance and how to let me open one of these, right? Let's say DB2 to Azure SQL DB and how a single table can be dynamically run as multiple pipelines. And we speak about all of what it is, how it can be run. And we actually provide you all of the details that you need to do it by yourself, but in case if you are, if you face issues or if you have challenges implementing it, uh, that is also at the end of this page. We provide our contact information. You can reach out to Azure Databases, SQL Customer Success Engineering, and we would be happy to help you out with that. So this is our blog space, and this contains everything, including mainframes. And at last, uh, what I want to speak about is our data migration guides. Data migration guides cover everything here from SQL, Oracle, DB2, SAP, MySQL, Access, and a lot of different NoSQL databases too. Uh, but if you want to specifically, let's say for this session, I want to migrate to from DB2 to SQL's server or Azure SQL database. Uh, it gives you what are the prerequisites? What do you need? What is the pre-migration setup? How to assess and convert using SSMA? SSMA, as Ashish pointed out, is free to use for all and you can just download it. It just needs a connection string to connect to both the end databases. Um, in this case, it's SQL DB and DB2 was ZOS. As, uh, as we also pointed out, SSMA works for DB2 LUW, ZOS, and I. So it covers all the flavors of DB2 that's available on the market. And uh, this creates you all of the details that is needed out of the box. It actually also provides you what's the type mapping. Type mapping means what on the source is mapped to what, what is on the target uh, with regards to column data types. And uh, there are variations, you can, you can change it. It provides you what are the, what is the compatibilities. And it also, what it does also do is it also helps you create some of these compatible functions on SQL if you're using from DB2 so that you do not have to change your code in any way. For example, timestamp or anything else that might act a little different on DB2, but we want to provide a feature parity 
So we implement that as additional functions as store procs on the target system. So your code base can remain as is and needs no changes whatsoever. So this is one of the migration guides that is available on our system. And going back to our slide deck, so this is just a part of what we have, but as I mentioned, there is a multitude of different things apart from this. On the resources, we, all, we will share this obviously at the end of this session and we also provide you what are the, what are the existing customer studies and how to, where our community blog is linked, where do we publish our architecture patterns and how do you reach out to us? So all of this is out there on the deck at the last page. And also you could directly send out an email to us if you have any concerns and or challenges, or if you want to learn more about how do I do X, Y, or Z to migrate and modernize from mainframe and mid-range systems onto Azure. 